This is the Vaccine Grand Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. And this is Grant. Welcome inside the studio. It is a Friday edition of the Vaccine Grand Sports Show, and Grant and I are hot and heavy and ready to roll. We've got a fun show going for you today, and you know what, Grant? Nothing makes me happier than seeing Commissioner Roger Goodell pout like a three-year-old child. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty so much. That's pretty much <laughs> the best way to see it. Um, for those of you that don't know, you know, all the Deflate Gate stuff took place yesterday. But we'll, we'll get, get into, to we'll get into it a little bit. But it just nah, it brightens my Friday up. I'm feeling a little little sick right now. I've got a, a, a sore throat. I was You're doing, not allowed to have that. I was doing a broadcast last night, and it was a very close game, so I was sh- shouting a lot more during the game, and it just... It was exciting, oh, but now I felt cool. now as I come into the studio this morning, I'm kind of like, <clears throat> "Good morning, Grant." Uh, 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 I was kind of <laughs> waiting to be like how Connor Christian is sometimes in the morning when he when he calls in. He's very much he's a tenor when he sings, but sometimes in the morning he's like, "Oh, good, good yeah, morning, he, guys. This is Connor." He's, like, he's very uh, he's very low voiced in the morning. Yes, he is. But I'm hoping to project and lift my soft palate this morning, so that <laughs> way I am much more. In the normal range, <laughs> as I communicate with the masses Very good. this morning. Very good. Welcome, everybody. We are excited to have you here for our Friday edition of the Max and Grant Sports Show. Just a friendly reminder that you can check out our show now Monday through Friday on Spreaker.com from 7 to 8 a.m. Central and on Sports Radio America from 11 to 1 p.m. Central Time and Live 365 and tune in. You can also catch our show on demand. You can go back and listen to it anytime you want to on iTunes iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com as well. You can also find us on Facebook at the Bax and Grant Sports Show. And you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at BG Sports Show. And on Twitter, it's uh, Baxter is at Baxter Colburn, and I am at Grant's Rant, BGSS. Special thanks to all of you watching the show on Periscope today. Hello to all of you. More people continuing to add to our Periscope broadcast. So thank you to all of you that are tuning in right now. Remember, if you're listening or watching to us on Periscope, you can comment on things we say. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer, or if you have a weird username, screen name that you think I should try to have some sort of an attempt to stay on the air, as Grant knows, it never goes very well. Uh, Good morning to, uh, let's see on that one, Shalidia? I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry about that one, but good morning to you. She's uh, coming to us live from New Orleans, so hello to you. Thank you so much for, uh, for tuning into the show. We appreciate that. Well, Grant, last night we saw an interesting and final Green Bay Packers preseason game. Yes. As I, the Green I Bay was, Packers defeated the New Orleans Saints. You were there. I was there. Covering it for us. You got to enjoy the game with your dad, but you were also yep. covering the game for us as well. Let's get some of your raw reactions, Grant. What do you got for us? Uh, well, we'll just start off with the quarterbacks right away. Uh, I, I'll, I'll have a lot of uh, comments about this game. Uh, but uh, Scott Tolzien, he was pretty much normal. They didn't do too much uh the first uh opening drives. It was a little bit of a struggle. Uh but it wasn't I wasn't too concerned cuz I knew that it wasn't the first team out there. It was just it was pretty much the same guys that played for most of the game. So I wasn't really too concerned uh with the slower start of uh, Tolzien did have one interception that was half his fault. Uh half a great play by the defender. Uh but then the big story uh, for the quarterbacks was Brett Hundley. Yes. Brett Hundley. The rookie uh, quarterback for the Packers out of UCLA. Their yeah. fifth-round draft pick when people were like, why are we drafting a quarterback? We have Aaron Rodgers. Rah, 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 think rah. of the future. Think of the future. Exactly. But he was 16 for 23 with 236 yards uh, and four touchdowns. His My rating was goodness. 142.4. Sign him up. And no interceptions. So glad I started Brett Hundley in preseason <laughs> fantasy football last night. Oh, did you? It's not a thing. Just okay. kidding. <laughs> I was like, I didn't think it was a it's thing. It's not a thing. No, uh, although I would have uh, racked in some good points. You, had I. you definitely would have. Uh, but, yeah, it. Uh, lost. Oh yeah, he played. <laughs> lost my train of thought there for a second. He played most of the game, and he looked he looked really well. He was in control. It, he didn't really make too many mistakes. There was only uh, one sack uh, on him, and all he needed to do really was step up in the pocket uh, for that one. And it, he would have extended the play, but he broke a few tackles. He he was pressured a little bit. But it wasn't anything like Packer fans are used to in the past. He did have some protection, so it was good seeing some protection from that O line. But it wasn't necessarily perfect. Then you go over to the running backs, and 
I tell you, Baxter, the running backs are making this interesting. Now, you say they're making it interesting. In what regards, though? Because Eddie Lacy, he's going to be starting for the Packers. Obviously, There's no yes. doubt about that. James Starks, well, you need, a, you need a consistent veteran. I feel like James Starks is he's not the same type of player, but the Fred right. Jackson kind of yeah, of the he's a good he's a good um he's a good uh back just to have like a third down back or a, a utility back and I, i'm sorry to interrupt you but apparently i th- i thought i was joking when i said preseason fantasy football like you know I was, I was joking saying oh i played last night well we just got a text into the show from our our football encyclopedia david kenyon telling oh, me course. that yes preseason daily fantasy is a thing and he said people are crazy so if you're crazy enough to play preseason <laughs> oh, daily fantasy football, first of all, more power to you because you're way smarter than I am. Because how would you like, being able to no, predict yeah. like who's going to play and stuff? I mean, I feel like it's a pretty safe bet if you put in second and third stringers, right? You now and be like, all right, you guys go, you guys play. You'll hopefully, fun. get me some points. I feel like it's way more of a Russian roulette style, though, because how are you supposed you to know? Guess and go, have fun. It, well, it is. Jeez. But, All right. That's why he. That's why we call David Kenyon the Encyclopedia of right? Football Knowledge, because yeah, he knows things that. like this. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway, going uh, back to the game, uh, well, yes, you do have uh, Eddie Lacy and Starks uh, starting for you going 1-2, but then you're going to have at least the third running back. Normally, teams carry three. So yes. I mean, sometimes they carry two, but I, uh, the Packers are safely, in my mind, going to carry three, especially the depth that they have at running back. I believe they have five running backs still on their roster. They do, indeed. Uh, uh, Alonzo Harris, he didn't perform extremely well last night, but he he was 13 for 41, Carries. He had a 3.2 average. His longest carry was nine yards. Wasn't too bad, but Rajon Neal, he had five carries for 20 yards. Uh, it's not too bad. Four-yard average. He had. He did not get the ball a lot, but he had some nice-looking runs. He really did not have a bad run. It was always positive. He found the hole. He cut up the field, and... Like it, it was what the Packers are looking for on first down or second down mm. balls, getting five or six yards, which is what they need. You can't do the no offense to Eddie Lacy, but sometimes his get the ball, run hard, hit the line, and then drop. Yeah, or bounce you know, around. That three yard, not cal- that three yard, four yards is not always needed. You want a right. guy that can break past that second level sometimes. Yeah, and then you had uh, John Crockett who had eight carries for forty two yards, uh, five point two yard average, one touchdown. Uh, and he did absolutely fantastic last night as well with not getting uh, the ball as much. They, cause they just distributed uh, the the workload evenly through all three running backs. Rightfully and, so. As you, you'd assume that in the final preseason game, you want to make sure you give all your guys somewhat ample carries. And whether you can say that there was a reason that Neil got less carries or not, you don't know. But maybe they were trying to give a guy like Alonzo Harris more carries so they had a better idea of who they were dealing with. Yeah, because Neil right now is, right now that I've been hearing, is the projected favorite to make the roster. So I think they were trying to give Harris and Crockett a, a shot at it. With the performance last night, I don't think Harris earned himself a roster spot, which is unfortunate. It is. Uh, but there's just so much depth that running back that the Packers have right now that he, it's – sorry, bro. It's the NFL. <laughs> sorry. Fair <laughs> enough. Now, I want to make note that um, it's it's too early to call him my boy, but I've been advocating for him for a while. Miles White, he had a pretty decent game last night. He had four catches for 46 yards and two touchdowns. Right, and he didn't play the whole game. So and the fact I, that he I was believe. able to cash in and get two touchdowns is a big deal. Yeah, and it was a little bit ridiculous because my boy, Jared Aberderis, played the whole stinking game. And how many he, catches did he have? He Jared? had one catch Oh, for six that's yards. not going to make an NFL roster. And he, it, it was just he went and sat in the middle, and he was sitting wide open. And there was a couple plays that he was sitting wide open, and he did not get the ball thrown well, to him. Well, it's not his fault. And, but then the problem was the defense knew they were trying to look for him because they were trying to give him an opportunity. It's been and publicized all over the place. And right. You'd have to so, be, you'd have to miss it on purpose so, to not know that Aberderis is going right. to try to get the ball a lot. So rookies trying to make a roster spot or just, hey, let's cherry pick Aberderis so we can try to get an interception and make this team. Yep. And, I mean, fair. I, I get that. But then Aberderis was hardly open the entire game. He was always double coverage. There was one uh, – I believe it was it was Miles White touchdown or one of his touchdowns because he had two, but one of them, 
it was four, four and, fourth and goal on the two, and Aberderis was in the slot, and um, White was on the outside. Yes. On on the left side of um, Hundley, and Aberderis uh, cut in. White went out. All the defenders went to Aberderis. <laughs> all of them, all four of them, the uh, linebacker, no, three of them, the linebacker, the corner, and the safety. The corner that was guarding White cheated and went to Aberderis. So I don't know if he was playing a zone, but he left White was, I would say, about seven yards from any Saints defender. Did they throw the ball to him? Then? Yeah, he was. Oh, like, I was yeah, going to say, was, is that one of White's touchdowns? Yeah, that was was, like, that's got to be. He was wide open in the end zone. That is funny. I mean, so, it was unfortunate for Jared Aberderis. Uh, he did have a chance returning. He had he had one the first punt return. He 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 went he went risky with it. There, the defender <laughs> was to. the defender was literally about to make a tackle on him when he caught it. Quick made a juke move and turned it up for a 15 yard return, and the blocking wasn't all that great. And he made actually a really good return out of nothing. And so. He, he did well in that, but he also dropped a ball and he fumbled it. It's not going to count. It's not going to show up in the stats because it was re- uh, turned over by a penalty. But the fact is, he still fumbled it. So that was a little upsetting for me because I'm a big Jared Aberderis fan. He, as a whole, two years with the Packers, have only has only practiced about five or six times with them, not even. Which is a little and concerning. And one game. I mean, but he's had injuries, obviously. Yeah. Another he, thing that you were mentioning with special teams, obviously, Aberderis, he got three punt returns last night uh, for 35 yards. Longest was 17 yards. You can take as much as you want out of this or not, but this is the second game in a row that Mason Crosby missed a field goal. Um, Yeah. Here, let me let me tell you why, because I, I know you didn't get to see because you were doing something yes. else. This is because the Packers are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there was four seconds left in the half, yes, and they were on the forty-four or okay. something like that. That's a fifty-four, f- sixty-one yard field goal. Oh, and then maybe it—it it was a six. They lined up for a sixty-six yard field 66, goal. Sixty-six. Well, yeah. fir- first, what it was, they put the defense on their five receiver set, empty backfield. Yeah, and then all the defenders dropped back. It was like hail mary, and then McCarthy was like, you know what? Give them a shot. They call a timeout, pull the offense up, put the kicking team out there, and everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> so he tries to boot this 66-yard field goal. He could have made about a 61. Oh, it, it was close. It was r- it was right down the middle. This wasn't long enough. It wasn't long oh. enough. That was short. The I guy, mean, so the you guy returned it. Take from it what you want, yeah. I guess. But <laughs> I'm not so, really yes, worried. It, it wasn't. It if wasn't he was, because he was able to convert a 54 yard field goal. Yeah. Oh, I, I and that, that and that one fun. had enough. Yeah. He he could maybe do a 60 yarder in regular season consistently, barely. If he does that uh, on special teams, a big thing positively. St- special teams as a whole was much better this game. Okay, we've uh, had some concerns about that. People yes. have even been writing into the show saying, "Can you talk about the special teams issues?" So yes. I'm glad that you brought it up. Uh, special teams uh, on the well, I don't know how much you can blame this, but on the long field goal try, there was a pretty decent return. Mm. There was a lot of missed tackles. That was the one play that was a little bit of concern. But Tim Mass Day. On his punts, he did much better. Four punts last night, a total of 172 yards. Averaged 43 yards a punt. That's not horrible. And his longest was 52, and I think one was even tipped, and he had it. It was a 40-yard punt. Wow. Yeah, the uh, uh, when the they were rushing him to block it, that was not the best because they were close twice last night, and I think they got their hand out one, if not two of them, but he still was able, like, in pressure, he had some pretty decent punts, so that was good to see, um, and McCarthy was talking about it before the show when I was driving to uh, watch the game, uh, they were doing the McCarthy show, show. Yeah. yeah, with him, and he was uh, talking about Mass Day and saying he was doing really well uh Really well uh, the day before in practice. He's come under a lot of under a lot of pressure recently. Though the last three games, yeah. Masta has not played well. At no, all. he has not played well at all. Uh, but he did a lot better last night. Uh, the special teams in general on kickoffs did fairly well. And then quickly uh, to finish up this segment, uh, the receiving because we talked a little bit about Jared Aberderis, yes. but I want to talk about 
um, some other. Who else stood out to you last night, Grant? Uh, obviously, Miles White, four for 46. Uh, Drafting two him, touchdowns. Picking him up off waivers. And he he did fairly well. Jeff Janis, he did great. Uh, even though he was only two for 21, he had a really, he had a really good touchdown. Uh, and then Larry Pinkard. He only had one reception, but it was for 77 yards. It was a quick little pass, too. Yeah, it was. It was a, outran everybody. It was more that, yes, one, that he was fast, more that he just got a step on the defender on the slant route, which is not too hard. Just if you have a little speed, you can yeah. do that. But the problem was the safety came down too far and then slipped, and Ooh. there was only it was only the free safety. Oh, and between and, yeah, him they, and the end zone? They brought the one – they brought the – they brought the strong safety down, and then they left one safety up. And so he came down, was like, oh, crap, slip, <laughs> and there was nobody there. That's funny. And so Pinker just had a straight shot to the end zone. Uh, but for him, that's big because he is fighting for a roster spot. It, it is. doesn't that, really look I like don't know he's going to grab it. I don't know if that might be it. enough, but I, I maybe he could practice would. squad it. Maybe. maybe he earned a little bit of practice squad. Yeah, I was – as I was broadcasting a high school game last night, I got the notification on my phone. It was like, oh, Larry Pinker's 77-yard touchdown. I was like, what the heck? So I like quickly looked at like just like the description of it, and like you said, it was just that long pass play. I was like, okay. Well, I had to, you know, gave a little two clap in the booth for Larry Pinker there. I'm like, good for him, Larry. All right, well, we're going to go to break. I know you wanted to talk about Deflate Kick, Grant. I know you did. I could see it in your eyes, but we're not going to do it right now. We'll do it later. All right. Maybe. Fine. Depending on how I feel. Okay. My coffee hasn't fully kicked in yet, so I don't know how much I'm feeling. We are feeling Sam Wallace, though. He'll be on the show here in our next segment as he offers his running 101 tip. We will definitely be getting to Deflate Gate later on in the show. Grant Scott is rant. Maybe he'll go all Deflate Gatey, ranty, crazy, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Sam Wallace is on the show next. You'll be right back. This is the Baxton Grant Sports Show. Welcome back to the Bax and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. Grant stepped out of the office, or the studio, or the whatever we are in here just for a moment for this next segment, as he, unlike myself, uh, he doesn't mind coffee, but he doesn't depend on it as much as I do. So he, he asked for a quick leave of absence to go do that, which is fine, because we're joined in the studio now by Sam Wallace. For those of you that tuned in last week, you got to hear the inaugural Running 101 segment from Sam Wallace. So, Sam, welcome back to the program. Awesome. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Well, Sam, last week we kind of just did a brief overview of you know who you are and just some general running stuff. But this week we have some uh, more official, in-depth tips for becoming a better runner and just enjoying the running of the world as it is. So I will turn it over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, awesome. I know last week, like you said, we just kind of did a brief overview of who I am and what I can hopefully bring to the show and to people who are looking to maybe get off the couch a little bit more and get outside and get active. Um, but I guess the first thing I really want to touch on is getting the right shoe fit for you. I think yes. that's the most important thing for new runners is sometimes people can get caught up in all the great styles and the shirts and the shorts and everything else that goes on into it. But if you don't have a good pair of shoes, 
it's not going to matter. No, your body's your not. body's going to break down. Your shins are going to hurt. You're going to get the shin splints, which I'm sure a lot of people in a lot of other sports are very very familiar with. Um, but the biggest thing that has helped me is starting off with is knowing what kind of arch type you have on your foot. Mm. Um, generally, the how bra- can you get that measured? Actually, you can do it at your house. It's pretty simple. Um, if you have either a piece of concrete like your driveway, or you can do it on a piece of like white pa- printer paper as well. You get the bottom of your foot wet, just damp, not soaking, and you do like one nice even step oh. onto either the concrete or the piece of paper and lift up, and you can see the outline of your foot. And the less of your foot that's showing in the middle, you have a higher arch. If you can see almost the whole flat part of your foot, you have pretty flat feet. Interesting. Wow. Something as simple as that. I mean, it's not super scientific. Anybody can do it at their house, but it's a little tip like that that you can then take to a running store where, again, they can look at that for you. They can look at the bottom of your feet, Yep. check things out. It's usually not too weird when they're looking at your feet, thankfully. Um, <laughs> I feel like that could be a, a, a bit awkward. Like, do they give you, like, a, you know, a manicure, a pedicure while you're no, there, too? No, like, thankfully, no. None of that? Okay. No, that, no. I'd find a different store then. <laughs> <laughs> Foot massage, maybe? That'd be, maybe, that maybe would be that'd cool. be helpful. That would be cool, yeah. Could use more of those. You but should open that. <laughs> you should, you know, add that to a running store if you open one later on. I'm game. There you go. Why not? All right. Um, but then looking at that is... Once you know more specifically like the arch type of your foot, that then allows you to get the better fitting shoe that supports your running stride and your body type and things like that. Runners that have a little more higher of an arch need more support in their feet because there's less of their foot on the ground at the same, at one time. So they need that shoe to kind of compensate for more surface area on the ground. Um, and then I guess on the flip side, runners that have more flat feet just need more general support because their feet are all on the ground. It can be a little more unstable. It's not as... I guess, scientifically designed for running Mm -hmm. as a little more of a medium arch type. And thankfully for me, I have a pretty neutral arch, so I can kind of go a little bit on either side. Oh, that is helpful. Okay. Yeah, that's very, very helpful. So um, trying to think what else. Um, With that, I guess some of the places that I've gone to, I guess kind of a quick plug for performance running outfitters is where I get my shoes. They have locations out in Brookfield and then one up in Shorewood. I've never been disappointed. I go there. They put you on a treadmill. They analyze your stride. They got a camera behind your feet watching your stride. They take you off the treadmill, then you can rewatch it in slow motion. And then you watch your feet, you know, watch your stride come down. You can see if your feet are kind of tipping to the outside, tipping to the inside, how much wow. support your ankles and your feet are actually giving you when you run. And then that's enough for them. Then they go to the back, they grab out, you know, four or five different pairs of shoes, starting from probably a little not enough support to too much. So they kind of overcompensate on purpose and then try to come back to find a shoe right in the middle that fits for you. It's interesting because you hear about just a general person that's like oh running it's not a sport there's not a lot of science that goes into running you just run Mm -hmm. you know that's all you do but then you hear about these shoe stores that you know they're taking video of your feet as you're walking you're getting officially sized you can do these different tests Mm -hmm. to see you know how much support you need and it really does develop and you can get more of a competitive edge based on if you have that perfectly fit shoe i know i've played soccer in the past and some cleats that i've worn have been a perfect fit. Now mm-hmm. the cleats, I feel like I've got a nail stabbing the bottom of my foot mm-hmm. because of the lack of support or whatever I've got on my foot, and it affects my game. And that's, I'm sure, the same way with with running. If you have yeah. a comfortable shoe that's a good fit, you feel like you can run, you know, six marathons in a day, as yeah. opposed to like a, a bad fitting shoe where you're just like, I don't want to walk down the driveway. Yeah, and when I was younger, I kind of fell into the the belief, the false belief actually, that well, you get a new pair of running shoes, you know, they're comfortable, they fit. You walk around in the store for like two minutes, all right, they're good. Mm. You go for a couple of runs, and you're like, oh, you know, they're uncomfortable, and then you just kind of think, well, I just have to break them in. Yeah, I have to you know, kind of suffer for a few weeks till they fit my feet and they'll be fine. Well, that works. But once I really got... It's not necessarily good for you, though. It's not. And I just kind of thought that was the way it is and no one ever really had told me differently. Um, But then when I went to an actual store to get fitted for a pair of shoes, I walked out of the store, did my run, and I'm like, these shoes, they feel like an extension of me. Wow. I don't notice they're there. They're perfectly comfortable. So you shouldn't have to put up with breaking them in per se as much i mean you still do because they're new they might be a little bit stiff yet but as far as how they fit your feet and your arch type that should be taken care of the minute you walk out the door well fantastic well sam wallace it's been a pleasure sir we appreciate you stopping by we enjoy your one running 101 tips and we look forward to hearing more from you next week sir where can we find you on twitter you've got a new twitter handle a new twitter handle yeah i just thought i'd mix things up wasn't really a fan of my old one wanda again mix things up keep it fresh but it's um it's at Samuel underscore Wallace 2. At Samuel underscore Wallace 2. Sam Wallace, the Bax and Grand Sports Show's official running, I guess, expert is the best way to put it. We'll call okay you an with expert. Yeah. Expert. you got to be an expert in something, right? And running seems to be your life, so why not? I'll take that. Quick side note, your fantasy football team. How are you looking this year? 
good, I think. Again, it's it's early to tell. I'm glad we did the draft after the Jordy Nelson injury. I think that really <laughs> would have really made... Hours after the Jordy Nelson Literally injury. hours. That would have made a lot of people upset. But I think we'll be okay. All right. Well, Sam, always a pleasure, sir. We will see you again next week. Enjoy your weekend. Sounds good. You as well. All right. We're going to go to another break. When we come back, Grant has his rant. And then a little bit later on, the one person in Bax and Grant Sports Show history that can make Grant basically not want to show up to the show, Megan Landvatter, the one person that will make Grant lose sleep because she loves ruffling Grant's feathers. We're excited for that, but thankfully they'll be, she'll be here on a positive note talking about the Badgers and Alabama. We'll be right back. This is the Bax and Grant Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. Welcome back to the Bax and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. And this is Grant. Welcome back inside the studio, folks. We are excited. It's Friday, and although it's going to be a little bit more in-depth, we're still going to include it as part of the segment. It's time for Grant's Rant, the Friday edition. Grant's had some good rants so far this week, but this one is... I don't know how I feel about this one, Grant, because you are... Are you are you pro Deflate Gage? I don't ever I'm, know. I'm, I'm pro being it done. Well, I think America like, as a whole just is. it being over and I have I have friends that are Patriots fans and I, you know, wanna wow. wanna like not make them mad, but I mean <laughs> still at the same time I'm like I think it's it's, it's pretty obvious what happened, well except to them, but like the, the I, only I people that think that. Like <laughs> out of all the people that are involved with football, I safely say unless you're a Patriots fan you think Tom Brady at least had something to do with the something to do with the show or with the with the show Tom Brady's not, part of the show yes with the show Tom um, where are you at Tom <laughs> with, late. The, with the balls being deflated yes I and as a side note I think it's funny I was listening to Sirius XM yesterday and I was listening to the soccer channel the whatever it is Sirius XM FC and they went to their little you know token 15 second break as they always do and they had their little you know this is the talk sport Sports Minute, whatever. So you've got all the British sports, oh, the cricket standings, the soccer standings, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, and from America, Tom Brady has been, had his appeal or whatever, and he will be, his suspension is lifted. I'm like, they care about this in Britain? Oh, my. It was, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> it's even. It's all over. All over. It was funny. Like, Tom Brady. I'm like, you make it sound like he's a prince or something. Prince Tom Brady. It was funny. Prince or Harry Tom Potter. Brady. Or king. Is he a king? duke? Is he a duke. baron? Baron Tom Brady. All right, you're done. Emperor. <laughs> you're done. You're done. I Sit down. Anyway, so what would you like to mention about it, Grant? All right. Uh, so with the Flake Gate, uh, as most of you are, if not everybody knew, because it blew up all over the place. Wait, uh, it did? You yeah, mean we over-publicized over. air pressure in footballs, Grant, for yes. months? We spent yes. millions of dollars on this? Yes. Meanwhile, Ray Rice hit his now wife, and Greg Hardy threw his ex-girlfriend out of a bed of guns and did horrible things to her. And we spent more time talking about air pressure in footballs? Yes. Say it's not so! It's so. Oh, my God. All anyway, right, continue. So, Judge Richard Berman uh, ruled that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't think I, after that. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, Baxter just grabbed me and shook me like a baby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, Judge Richard Berman uh, said that uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell well, went too far in punishing... Uh, Tom Brady, and that there was no evidence, 
saying that he had anything to do with the air pressure in the footballs. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he alleviated the punishment that was uh, put. He deflated the punishment. Yes. he. Oh, you're you're done. (laughs) You're done. It's Friday. I can have fun. (laughs) So, yes. uh, Now Tom Brady's suspension has been lifted. He can now start uh, week one. And fans everywhere are like, oh, whatever. He got away with it. And Patriots fans are now just taking it like to Roger Goodell saying, ha, ah, take that. And everybody's like, go Tom Brady. You bought the <laughs> system. Proud of you. And then everybody's like, well, now you just let him get away with it. And everybody is like 100% certain that uh, Judge Berman, the only reason he let Tom Brady go was because Tom Brady's on his fantasy team. Hey, I mean, you got to win. Got to win your league, especially if it's you know, a keeps league. Maybe it was like a dynasty league or a play for keeps league, and he just happened to have Brady on his team from last year. Yeah, so, we can neither hey, confirm nor deny if Judge Berman has Tom Brady on his fantasy team, but it would add a massive amount of irony if he did. Right. Well, then the NFL has gone back and appealed that now. So they've appealed the appeal. They've appealed the appeal. Because that's what we do in America is we appeal appeals. So guess what? It's still not over. We still this trial is like an it. onion. It's multiple layers. It's got layers. It's like an ogre. <laughs> so uh, just my feelings about that, it's yes, with the Wells report being a thousand and a half pages long <laughs> and nobody <laughs> wanting to read it and being a waste of money. I know. I didn't I mean, it. people saying it didn't have evidence, there's evidence that there was... In what regards, Grant? Well, Where is okay. your evidence? The evidence was that there was clearly the balls that were deflated. 11 out of the 12 balls were deflated. Yes. So you have that. Then you have the evidence of the ball boys going in uh, to the bathrooms and deflating them. And yes, you have no physical evidence like looking at it that way. Yes. But also evidence is behavioral, behavioral patterns of people and what – You've uh, what we have heard throughout the league that with any quarterback in any team in the league, you do not mess with the balls unless the quarterback tells you to do something with them. Am I the only one in America that thinks that when Tom Brady said, "Oh, I had no idea the balls were deflated," that maybe he used that twelfth ball that hadn't had air pressure changed? You, there's no. Am way I the only one that that <laughs> thought of that? There's no Maybe way that's that what you're happened. Gonna... I'm just just as a thought. I'm gonna just toss that out there. The masses can do with it as they want. They've do you do you ever watch a game of football? Do you watch football? Once or do twice. you even football? I, I do football and right. I football as well. <laughs> so they're after the plays, they're throwing it to the ball boys on the sideline sure. and just exchanging the balls quickly. Potentially, there is no way that just the one ball was used. Stranger the things happen. There is no. It's, but maybe they use that ball the majority of the time. And maybe because when Brady had the ball, I mean, we saw Garrett Blunt. He was running all over the place against the Colts. Maybe they when they had the deflated balls frequently. in, maybe those are the times they ran the ball a lot. Maybe I'm they did it on you, purpose so Brady possible. would never touch a deflated football. It was never used as a— I have solved the case. <laughs> I have solved it all. That was never used as a point for Why like, wasn't it? the defense because it's not possible. You don't it's know not that. possible. Stranger things have happened. You can put markings on balls so you know— It is not possible. Mm. That's why the defense did not use it because it literally would not have proven anything. You can't prove that. There's no evidence. Tom Brady's a free man. Tom Brady's a free man. And we'll see what happens against the Steelers week one, Grant. I wish we had more time. I wish we do. But at the same time, I'm glad I'm said, at the same time I'm glad we don't have more time because right? I'm done. Yeah. Just, and I said I was done just, like just done, I said I was done with this game. like a month ago. And we've talked about it like five times. So yeah. Time. Well with the evidence, like it's more just the fact that he would he would know. And they he would tell the staff to do that, and of course they're not gonna say anything. And another thing is Brady destroyed his phone, so so that the, he, so that there wasn't evidence that could have been given over. But yes, I still think the Patriots would have won the game anyway. Fair to enough. me, like that's the thing. Like Garrett Blunt. Yeah, he ran. He the carried ball. the blunt of the team. The brunt yeah, of the team. Yeah, he had two hundred plus yards. He did. He's that boss. game. So I I'm not concerned with that fact that it affected the game much. And I mean like. Maybe four games was a little much. It Maybe if much. they lowered it, there could have been a, a less of a like there might not have been game, an appeal or yeah or something like that. A quarter, because, a half. <laughs> I thought Johnny Manziel got a half for a suspension one time. Really? For, I forget what he did, but yeah, he was suspended for a half. 
Jeez. Then came back out and torched the other team. He was like, all right, enough of this. And that was in college, but he was actually good. Okay. All right, we're going to a break when we come back. Speaking of college football, though, Megan Landvander will be in the studio to talk about the Wisconsin Badgers taking on the Roll Tide, Crimson Tide of Alabama. That's next on the Vax and Grand Sports Show. Show presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. And this is Grant. All right, Grant. Well, it is the time of the show where we get to bring in one of our favorite people. We lost intern Laura, so we have to have a female presence around the studio oh, somehow, yes, in course. a positive manner, of course. So we have Megan Landvetter joining the show today. Megan, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Ah, we're doing just fine. We're excited because the Wisconsin Badgers and the Alabama Crimson Tide take on each other on Saturday evening, so tomorrow night down in Dallas, because that's exactly where these two teams are supposed to play, is a, a neutral site that's in the south, which makes it a home game for Alabama, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, with Alabama fans, it's just that's just a huge program. So, if, of course, if it's closer to Alabama, they're just going to travel. Yeah, I don't really know how I feel about that in total honesty. You know, I heard that they were having trouble selling tickets, so we'll see how Having many trouble? People... Maybe to Badger fans that aren't well, making the trip. They, well, they priced them... Like it was a playoff kind of at, like game, oh. so they're I guess really ridiculously expensive. Jerry so Jones is realizing the Cowboys aren't going to make the playoffs this year, so he <laughs> needs to get his money somehow this year. I yeah. is that too soon? Yeah. I don't know. Well, Megan, as we look towards this Wisconsin Badgers Alabama Crimson Tide game, Corey Clement, the Badgers running back, has received a lot of press. He's even considered to be one of the early Heisman candidate runners as well. Uh, how much are we going to see of Clement tonight, and do you feel that he, or tomorrow night, excuse me, and do we feel that he is going to be enough to take down the Crimson Tide? You know, I think we'll, well, you know, it depends on uh, what Alabama's plan is. I would expect Alabama to stack the box and make it difficult for Clement to run. So it'll be interesting if Joel Stave could make the passing game a threat at all. That would obviously give Clement a little bit of a, an opportunity to run. He certainly has the talent to be a great running back. He did well under Melvin Gordon last year, but obviously two different running backs, two different seasons, two different teams. So we'll see if he can make an impact um, against Alabama. How much of an impact does Joel Stave need to have on this game for the Badgers to win? Um, You know, again, I think Joel Stave just really needs to make running an option so that there's at least a, you know, have enough passes where Alabama sees that as a threat. Um, Joel Stave is not... <laughs> Joel Stave is not going to win the game, let's just say that. He's it, not? He, you don't uh, not think by that himself, he's got it? Not no. by himself. So this no. is not the type of game where we can see a quarterback take over a game and make shrewd passes and really just pick apart an opposing well, team's defense? Joel Stave is not going to be that quarterback, <laughs> Fair Let's enough. just be honest. Bob. No, that's a very true statement. I mean, you know, Tanner McAvoy, he, he was the quarterback last year for some time, and we saw him. He's back on the defense now. Now, the fact that you've got a 6'6", 229 safety for the Badgers, I think might prove to be very important as well for their defense. And obviously you're going to want to slow down the Crimson Tides offense any way you can. Now, you did mention the fact that it's a tale of two different running backs this season, Corey Clement 
He is projected to do fairly well throughout the remainder of the season. However, though, this will probably be the toughest defense he faces all season. Is this a match, or a game, rather, where Corey Clement goes for over 100 yards? Um, yeah, I'll say he'll go over 100, but... I don't know. It just it all depends. Again, I really think that the impact of this game is going to come down to whether or not Joel Stave can make enough passes to give Clement those opportunities. Um, because obviously, whatever Joel Stave does is going to depend on how Alabama plays defense. So yeah, if Clement gets a hundred yards, it's going to be the tough way. It's not going to be easy. It's going to mm-hmm. be because he's getting the majority of the touches, and it's going to be it's going to be hard for him to just ground a pound. Uh, but I think he'll be able to do it. And yeah, exactly like what Megan's going to be saying. It's what a lot of it's going to be is if Stave can get the ball out and pass it and at least make it somewhat of a threat. So make play action, at least an option or something like that. But just the, it's just the classic problem of just having just a one phase offense and just being able to play against that. So the Badgers need to solve that problem. And one thing, too, just to note for Corey Clement, he's only a junior this year. Uh, over the last two seasons, he's been behind guys like Melvin Gordon, Monte Ball, not too bad of guys to learn from. He's over. He's amassed 1,496 uh, total yards from rushing and 16 touchdowns. Not bad, considering he's only started one game his entire career in college. Yeah, not bad at all. Well, uh, Megan, as we continue to look through this game, I think it's interesting because if you are outside the state of Alabama or outside the state of Wisconsin— this game, to an extent, doesn't really matter to the college football landscape. Is it because it's Wisconsin, Alabama? If this was Alabama, anybody else, would this be highly, way more publicized? I believe so, yeah, because, you know, the Badgers are going into this as major underdogs right now, and I don't think there's a lot of people that believe that the Badgers are going to beat Alabama. So if you put Alabama with a different opponent that maybe – people saw as a little bit of an even matchup, I think it'd be more publicized than it is. Or even if it was somebody in their own conference, it may be like if they were ranked 25th or not even in the top 25, but recognized as a good team, people just love that conference. So, I mean, if if it was anybody or anybody and one of the Southern teams, somebody like that, it's always a bigger game. But, I mean, Alabama playing the 20-ranked team from the Big Ten – Nobody's really concerned about it because pe- even though the Big Ten is gaining respect, people don't gain uh, respect the Big Ten as much as some of the uh, other conferences, some of the bigger conferences in the league. So that's why that I think is a factor in why people don't care as much about this game. Well, I was we look forward to this game uh, at the moment. Uh, Wisconsin is the underdog. They're favored. They're projected to be about a 10-point underdog in this game, Megan. Is this a game where we see Wisconsin eclipse the 30-point mark, if they're lucky? Or is it going to be... I feel like Alabama's going to come out hot, they're more than likely going to score right away, and then Wisconsin's going to kind of be playing catch-up the rest of the game. But if they can... If they hypothetically do win the game, or if they end up losing this game, what's a respectable way to lose this game, if there is any way? Yeah, I guess a respectable way to win this game would just fight you know with Alabama and just keep the back and forth nature going um and just never you know like you said I think Alabama will come out hot and I think that they will score right away but if the Badgers can kind of come back and you know you know let's say Alabama scores and Wisconsin scores and just kind of even if you get like a field goal to their touchdown and you just kind of stay in the game at least and just not have a blowout I think that would be respectable right well, I agree with that, but I also do think that um, the Badgers are not going to be able to keep up with that, in my opinion, just because, you know, it's it's the Badgers versus Alabama. we got to be real here. It's not going to go as well as we'd hope to. I do think, however, uh, that the Badgers are going to put up a fight in the second half, kind of like what Baxter was saying. They're going to uh, – the Al- Alabama's going to start out hot, and then the Badgers – are going to kind of struggle. They're going to find their feel like halfway into the game, but I think they're going to kind of get blown out by about 14, 20 points. We'll see. I don't think the Badgers are going to make it close at all whatsoever. 
Well, we'll find out, I guess. We're excited for that game. Saturday night is the main event. Megan, thank you so much for stopping by. Are you hanging out to play Name 5 with us, or do you have to scoot away? I have to go take a quiz. Oh, unfortunate. Thankfully, yeah. Grant, I found a competitor for you, and you're going to love who it is. You'll find out, Grant, in just a moment. Megan, always a pleasure. Where can the good people find you on social media? You can find me at Lonvader812. All right, Lonvader812. Megan Lanvader, our official... Uh, what is she? Wisconsin Badgers expert, I guess, for us. Sure. And Green Bay Why Packers not? insider and just all around sports guru for us. So, Megan, always a pleasure. Enjoy your day and enjoy your Labor Day weekend as well. Thanks. You too. All right, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, Grant will look to gain back a little bit of respect as he was dealt a 24 22 loss last weekend in Name 5 uh, in a British opponent. And this week, he will be a little bit more domestic in the form of a good friend of the show. You will find out in just a moment who Grant is playing. This is the Baxton Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. Welcome back to the Bax and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. And this is Grant. Special thanks to Sam Wallace and Megan Landvatter for coming on the show earlier on. Sam Wallace offering his Running 101 segment, as he does now every Friday, on the Bax and Grant Sports Show. And it was great, Grant, to finally have Megan Landvetter back in yeah, the studio. Yeah, it's great to get her back. She's it was, so busy. She it's is. Hard, it's hard to get her. I had to book her like a month in advance, and this is finally <laughs> the time that she was able to join us. So I'm glad we were able to get her back. And uh, we kept it civil this time because there's been a few times where she's been on the show. I didn't want to paint the picture that you guys hate each other, but there have been times yeah, where yeah. we talk <laughs> about certain subjects and you are both like in each other's face like, well, I believe this. No, I believe this. It's, okay. Baxter's, it makes for good radio. Baxter is blowing this up a little bit. I would just never. A little, just a little bit. When have we, I ever <laughs> overdone anything in my professional career, Grant? But he's making it sound like we hate each other. We despise each other. We Maybe if that's what the fans each want. Other's Next. If that's what no. the fans want, Grant, that's what the fans are going to get. We like each other. We're friends. I, I don't hold any negative feelings towards Megan whatsoever. Unless she kicks all our butts in fantasy football. Which, I mean, could happen. It's you very know. possible. I, I know my my butt's going to get kicked, whoever I play. <laughs> Megan's so. the only girl in our, our fantasy football Oh, league. she's going to wreak havoc. She is going to do, do some dirty things in terms of destroying all of us. Aaron Rodgers is her quarterback, so... I'm well, scared. She also has Jordy Nelson, so that well, well she did she, she probably did that one. She well, did it no, as she a, did she that did on it, purpose. She though. did it as a gesture. Well, I mean, if she wasn't gonna do it, I was gonna do it Someone eventually. 
Absolutely. Because well, we, at that point, we didn't know the extent of his injury. That's true. So we were just no, like, you're yeah. absolutely right. Well, Grant, it's Friday. Do you know what it means on Fridays? Name five Fridays. Absolutely. It is Name Five Fridays. Grant Coppersmith dealt a 24-22 to loss last week at the hands of Simon Mitchell, our Premier League soccer insider on the show. Well, Grant, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking sorry an L. in advance. You're taking the L. I'm taking an L. Why already. are you taking the L? Just because the Encyclopedia of Football, David Kenyon, is your challenger this week means nothing that you have to already toss in the towel. David, how do you feel that Grant is already trying to forfeit the game? I'm a little hurt, but I'll take a win anyway. I guess. Well, as, as I think the reason it's Grant, out of respect. I think the way I think the reason Grant is so uh, nervous is that David, you are the only person in Name Five history that has got a perfect a perfect score. So Grant, uh, he's gotten close, but never never quite finished it exactly. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, Name Five, we have five rounds of questions. Uh, with topics that involve, uh, for hypothetically, if th- this is not one of the topics, but today what we could do uh, name five NFL wide receivers. Grant would have 10 seconds to name five NFL wide receivers. If he names all five, he gets a point for each correct answer. Then David would go. David cannot repeat any of the answers that Grant offered, and he would get fi- one point for each correct answer as well. We do this for five rounds. We do it through multiple different sports. And we kind of see what happens. So I'm ready. I don't know about the all, all y'all, but I know I'm ready because I get the best seat in the house. Yeah, you do. You don't have to. It's so hard Like to – you just panic because you have 10 seconds to name off five people. And, and then Baxter's just sitting there on his phone someone's, time and you just kind of – Well, <laughs> someone's got to keep score. Someone's got to make sure that – And then you you're know. just like stressing out and like, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Okay, can I have – a, like a quick clarification. Can I just use last names? Because I'm like always like in the middle of an answer, and I'm like, what's their first name? But I know their last name. So is last names okay? Um, I suppose. All right, cool. <laughs> I suppose as long as. Yeah, I will ask you to. No, that's fine. I trust. Like, yeah, if there's I'll, a I'll questionable, both of your a questionable thing. On yes, it. if it's questionable, I will. I will ask accordingly. But uh, I trust both of you, gentlemen. We'll be fine. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, David, since you are the technical, undefeated, reigning champion of Name 5 as a whole, you will get to start first with 10 seconds on the clock, sir. Your first category today is Name 5 Major League Soccer Teams. Go. Portland Timbers, Seattle Sounders, Real Salt Lake, D.C. United, and the Kansas City Wizards. Uh, incorrect. Keep going. Time's up. Kansas City oh. Wizards are no longer a franchise. They were rebranded to the to uh, a different name that I won't say in case Grant decides to go for it. You are technically correct, but it's not true because they're not a current franchise. But you will still get four points for that. Grant, are you ready, sir? You should get at least one. I, I know two. Okay. I can think of two. Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. Uh, New England Revolution, uh, Chicago Fire. Uh, you have... Um, L.A. Galaxy, that's all I got. Time's up. Hey, you got three. I got three. three. Well, because I knew uh, Seattle and Portland, and those are. I was like, oh, five, and then, yeah, I was like, oh, he said them. That happens. Oh, well. That oh, happens. Well. oh, well. All right, Grant, you will start this round. The score is four to three right now in favor not of bad, not David Kenyon. You still got, you got a chance, Grant. <sighs> the door is open still. <laughs> all right, Grant, you are going to be naming five current NFL backup quarterbacks. Five current NFL backup quarterbacks. They're not the starters. So anybody that is not a starter that is on a current roster. On your mark, get set, go. Well, you have Tolzien, Hundley, uh, Tebow. Uh, Time's up. Grant got three. I could see the wheels turning, but there was too much smoke and you couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I was trying to think of it. Yeah. All right, Kenny, are you ready, sir? Yes, on your sir. mark, get set, Go. Matt Moore, E.J. Manuel, Brendan Whedon, Mark Sanchez, and Brock Osweiler. Correct. You got five. I, one of those, you're what you were looking for. It was Greg? Mark Sanchez. That's, ah, because I, I was because you said Tebow, so I thought maybe yeah, you'd that's do the what whole, I was. That's what I was trying to think of, I but I couldn't. I couldn't get the name out. I was wondering if you were going to do the whole, you know, B- Matt Barkley and Matt, Mark Sanchez and all that stuff. All I could think of was Geno Smith for some reason. He technically is a backup. 
Anyway. Well, I get, well, I don't know if you can technically call him a back because well, he is starting, a starter, but, but he's he not starting had a, he's yeah. injury, so I don't know. I didn't know the technicality on that one. Happens. All right, uh, Kenny, you're leading us off for this next round. You need to name five AFC teams. On your mark, get set, go. Denver Broncos, Oakland Raiders, Kansas City Chiefs, San Diego Chargers, Baltimore Ravens. There we go. Boom. Answer a second. Are you ready, Grant? Sure. On your mark, get set, go. Uh, Texans, New England Patriots, Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, the Bengals, and the Buffalo Bills. Correct. Grant with his first five-point round, keeping semi with pace. All right, Grant, I had to throw this question in just because. The soccer question you thought was for me? Uh, no. Yeah, it was, but it wasn't. This one's for me. Name five. Grant, you'll be starting this round. Name five NFL current kickers. On your mark, get set, go. Uh, Crosby. That's all I got. I only That's know all Crosby. you got. I only got you Crosby. You don't know anybody else nope. in the entire NFL. Nope. Not even for the Vikings. Nope. Not even for the Lions. Nope. Time's up. <laughs> wow. I only know Crosby. You should at least know the four NFC North kickers, Grant. You should. I you don't. see him twice a year. I know Longwell. Well, that's he's not current. I know. <laughs> All right, David, are you ready? Yep. On your mark, get set, go. Matt Prater, Robbie Gold, Steven Goskowski, Adam Vinatieri, Matt Bryan. There we go. Correct. Okay, I should have known more than one. I didn't know. It. Yeah. Goskowski I was like, and I was like Blair Walsh, Steven Goskowski, Sebastian Janikowski. Okay, yeah. I only know. Throw an Owski on the end of any name, really, and you've got a kicker in the NFL. Max Dorowski. Cole Bronowski. <laughs> that kid went places, let me tell you. All right, Kenny, you will be leading off our final round uh, as you currently hold a 19 to quick math here. <laughs> Uh, 19 to 13 lead. So unfortunately, Grant has no way to win, but Grant could at least get a few, <laughs> a few salvageable points here. So all right, Kenny, leading off, you are to name five backyard sports original characters, not the pros, just the original characters. On your mark, get set, go. Pablo Sanchez, Pablo Sanchez. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Phillips, Ricky Johnson, Kenny Kawaguchi, and Pete Wheeler. Boom! I love it. I feel like and, I went... and Pablo Sanchez. Oh, and, and Pablo. Pablo Sanchez. I, I I don't think everything. he said Pablo Sanchez. He, no. That's uh, the... yeah, he's everything. So he counts five times. He does. He That's does. the I only just, one I knew. I should put an asterisk next to that. You don't know anybody else? No. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'll give you your ten seconds. Do with them as you will. Ernie Steele. Well, I would just. Petrovic. Okay. Yeah. Come, come on, Grant. Yeah. I'll I'll just Angela say. Angela Del Vecchio, uh, Tony uh, Del Vecchio, the Sydney and Ashley Weber sisters. Deflate Gate. I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Grant takes a zero in that one. <laughs> Kenny wins the game at 24 to 13. Not Grant's finest outing. No, those were tough. Those Six, were tough. I'm sorry, 24 to 12. I'm sorry, I was too generous, Grant. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's you got to know your backyard sports characters, Grant. That was life <laughs> back in that, the day. When I was nine. That still, so? I'm almost 21. Irrelevant. I still play backyard baseball on my computer. <laughs> From time to time, when I'm not playing FIFA 15. <laughs> well, see, I don't have time for video games. Oh, fair enough. You have a child. I have a child. I suppose. I, no, I don't. <laughs> so, to my knowledge. <laughs> do, do, you need, do you need to say? No, do you need to I'm good. something? I am okay. good. I am good. Well, congratulations, David. Thank you so much for joining us this week. You uh, continue your reign of 2-0 and now in name five. Not a perfect score, but you got 24, so well done, sir. Grant, uh, suffer. Asterisk. An asterisk. Well, it's a, it's a mild blemish. I think we could give you like 24 and a half, but I, I did appreciate you knowing the Kansas City Wizards, though. The correct term of who they are now is sporting Kansas City, just FYI. I mean, they're still in Kansas City. It is, but they don't go by the Wizards anymore. For a true MLS soccer snob, if you said the Kansas City Wizards, they'd be like, that's not their name right now. Well, I mean, you have in hockey, you have the Phoenix Coyotes, who technically are now the Arizona Coyotes. And well, what are they? Call, bran- what are they branded as now? They're branded now as the Arizona Coyotes. But if you call them the Phoenix Coyotes, nobody would care. Well, in Major League Soccer, it's a little different. No, not really. Act like you know. The give them the point. Act like you know. I can't. I'll give them an asterisk. <laughs> I'll, I'll give them an asterisk. Twenty-five. You got a perfect score in my part. In my heart, David. I appreciate that. <laughs> David Kenyon, always a pleasure, sir. We'll be chatting with you on Tuesday next week. Enjoy your weekend, sir.
and I'm going to preview my beatdown of Grant. In oh, the fantasy yeah. <laughs> fantasy football, Grant takes on David Kenyon oh, yeah. week one in fantasy yeah. football. Yep. Mark your calendars. <laughs> another beatdown. I'm already taking another L. <laughs> taking it again. Anything Miracles can happen, Grant. We'll find out what ends up happening. But, David, always a pleasure, sir. Uh, enjoy your Labor Day weekend and uh, have a little better re- rest and relaxation time if that is possible for you at all. All right. Thanks, guys. No problem. David Kenyon, your name five winner this week, defeating Grant by a score of 24 to 12. You did okay. 25. 24 and a 25. half. 25. He said the Kansas City Wizards. It counts. They are still in Kansas City. It's not the same name, though. It's the same. Go to MLSsoccer.com. Nobody cares about Kansas MLS. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> there. Boom. Wow. Lay it Just down. because you don't Lay care doesn't down. mean that the rest of the soccer community it's doesn't. It's like one of the weakest sports in America. That is not even true. <laughs> I don't even have time to to, to rebuttal your oh, argument. Oh, now I'm just getting you uh, mad. Give me a rant. Getting under give his me collar. A <laughs> Why I oughta. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the Baxton Grand Sports Show. Thank you to all of you that tuned in on Periscope and watched us live. Thank you to all of you that listened from Monday through Friday here on Spreaker.com, live from 7 to 8 a.m. Central, and on SportsRadioAmerica.com, and live through 65, and tune in from 11 to 1 p.m. Central. Remember, you can go back and check out our shows anytime you want on demand on iTunes. Subscribe to our podcast. Let us know your thoughts. You can always uh, listen to us on iHeartRadio and on Spreaker.com as well. You can also find us on Facebook at the Backs of Grand Sports Show. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. At BG Sports Show. Baxter on Twitter is at Baxter Colburn, and I am at Grant's Rant BGSS. Yes, indeed. Special thanks to Megan Landvatter for coming on the show today, previewing the Badgers and Alabama Crimson Tide Clash and Arlington, Arlington, Texas. Rota. Saturday night. Don't miss it. It's going to be quite a game. And then to Sam Wallace as well with his Running 101 segment. And then, just briefly joined by David Kenyon, the Encyclopedia of Football Knowledge. Pretty much. As he defeats Grant by a score of 24.99 <laughs> to 12. <laughs> hey, round it up, 25, I'll take it. Ah, 24.3, 24.4. Either way, David won. <laughs> Grant lost. Grant is 25. 0 2 the last two weeks. we got to get Grant to better. We're going to have to just go all hockey. We have to go all college hockey on you, Grant. I. College hockey. No, not I was, even I was college referencing hockey. Miracle. Oh, anyway, I got you. Thank you for I, tuning I, in. Good and reference. Good you, reference. Thank good you, reference. Thank you. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Grant and I will be taking a rest as well, but we will see you all again on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Be good. Be safe. And remember, the sports world is a crazy place, but if it happens, Grant and I are going to talk about it. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. <laughs>